Hello, it's Philip Taylor from Richmond Green Chambers speaking. I'm looking at a book from Oxford University Press. It's in the Oxford Principles of English Law series, and it's this edition, which is English Public Law, now in a second edition. You can see how big it is. Well over 1,200 pages. It's got a standard structure with uh, all sorts of things like paragraph numbers at the sides, a substantial, well over 20 chapters, and then towards the back you've got a very, very detailed uh, index. Uh, and I'm very impressed with, with the publication, although it is a heavy one. It did come in a box set. When I, in, when I actually reviewed the first edition years ago, I didn't do a video, but for this one, got a little video clip, and we've got a written review, which I've written now with my wife Elizabeth, and we've given it the title, um, A Public Law Roadmap. Now, what the editor, and it's now David Feldman, and the series editor, Andrew Burrows, have done is they've basically given you an approach as to how to find out how the public sector is affected by law. And this is a high-quality overview of the rules and principles of English public law, as to be expected from OUP. And they've done their homework. The first edition I found very useful. It was, it was good for people with um, a reasonable... Uh, good general knowledge, um, who were looking for something a little bit more than a very simple book, and that's what you've got here. The inspiration, of course, came from both English public law and English private law from the late Professor Peter Burks, who identified a pressing need to create a clear authoritative overview of both areas of law for the benefit of practitioners, academics and students alike. And it's a mixture of all three, which is what gives it its uh, a particular usage. Unlike private law, of course, public law deals with constitutional law, human rights, admin and criminal law. And as Feldman points out, the massive amount of minutely detailed information on public law is available from the internet and other sources. It's now overwhelming and daunting. Therefore, if you're a lawyer or anybody involved, I think you'll find this public law edition as a road map, so to speak, of the legal landscape, um, very helpful in today's um, rapidly changing legal environment. We're gratified to read that the editor's preface su um, suggests that lots of questions are being raised which sum up the deep concern of many practitioners today um, as to exactly what is happening with public law. And that's uh, obviously a question that's being posed. The pace of change is of course massive and there's a lot of Incons um, inconsiderable disquiet about what's happening and Feldman actually says this new century has seen human rights, freedom of information, devolution and heightened concern for the separation of powers becoming prominent in the constitution and that's really in 2010 where we're going. There are lots of changes mentioned I'll just highlight the Constitutional Reform Act 2005 obviously lots of changes with this new Supreme Court and so forth but let me just conclude by saying that readers and researchers will find English Public Law and the other companion volume, which I'm also going to review, invaluable in constructing a deeper and more uh, useful insight into the understanding of the full spectrum of English law. Now, Burroughs, as the overall editor, reminds us that Burke's original aim was to, for every English lawyer's clerk to have a copy of this on the desk, at least as a first point of reference. I don't know whether that's happened, but it's a view which we can only concur with. Every English lawyer, we believe, there shall, therefore should own a copy. Well, we've got an aim, haven't we? Anyway, thank you to all the people involved and also to OUP. Bye-bye.